welcome to another edition of The Comic Anthologist. And if you are tuning in for the first time, please hit the subscribe button to show your support. And also hit the bell just to let us know that you're tuning in and taking a look at the content that we are providing. Now, today we are going to talk about the grandfather of Martin. Uh, not Martin, but the grandfather of Marvel Comics. And we are talking about the person by the name of his name. He was a publisher by the name of Martin Goodman, which is the uncle of the late Stan Lee. Right. Now, Martin Goodman was originally named Mo Goodman, and he was born January 18th, 1908. And he had gotten a start in publications working with Louis uh, Silverkut. I can't remember, pronounce the name correctly, but that gentleman ended up being the founder of Archie Comics later on down the road. Mm. Now, when he went to go work for him, it was one of those things he was learning about the publication and the publishing uh, industry or whatnot. The business, terms, right. Yes, exactly. He was learning about the publishing industry in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, creating comic books, right. magazines more so than anything or whatnot. But then that was around the time in 1933 when he had Marvel Science Comics, which was not necessarily Marvel Comics. Right. But it was one of those things where he eventually introduced a character by the name of Kazar which was a Tarzan-like character at that time. Which is still prominent in the Marvel Universe now. Very day. Exactly. And with having said that, it was around 1937 when he had gotten married to Stan Lee's cousin, uh, Jean, and it was one of those times where he was heading back home from his honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll let you go ahead and interject from there since you know about that one. So basically, um, as he was heading home, they got tickets to get on this blimp called the Hindenburg. And basically, they got the tickets, but they could not get on that flight to to uh, travel back home. And so they, basically, they couldn't sit together in during that flight. So they just decided to, just, to take a regular airplane and go home that way. But had they been on the Hindenburg, they would have been part of the Hindenburg disaster that had taken place and there would be no Marvel comics. Exactly. And basically, if you look at it from a time travel standpoint, yeah, history would have been rewritten totally to the point where there would be no Stan Lee, there would be no Jack Kirby, because Martin Goodman was the main one that hired these artists back in the day. Now, Joe Simon was one of the characters, or rather the third, uh, was one of the uh, writers that introduced Captain America. He was Along the, with uh, Jack Kirby. Yes. Joe Simon and Jack Joe Kirby. Joe Simon and Jack Kirby created Captain Marvel, not Captain Marvel, Captain America <laughs> back in 1940. Mm -hmm. And it was their third character that they had created at the time because, and it was more popular because of World War II. Right, and also too, uh, with the comic book that they created, Timely Comics came out with Marvel Comics number one. And that was October of 1939. Now it's... 80,000 copies. Right, and it introduced what we see in popular culture now is the Submariner and the and Human, Human Torch, Torch, but not the Human Torch from the Fantastic Four. Exactly. It's, right. not, it's, it's the, the Android. Android. Yeah. The Android version. Phineas Morton. Yes, yeah. exactly. And that version of the, Andro the Human Torch and the Submariner were the first two which would eventually become part of the Marvel Universe down right. the road. Timely Comics gave way to Atlas Comics mm -hmm. later on in the 50s because Joe Simon and Jack Kirby had left Captain America Comics after issue number 10. Joe Simon took Stan Lee under his wing and once those two left, basically he gave Stan Lee the editorial duties of creating. Or You're talking about Martin Goodman giving uh, Stan yes, Lee? Yes, Martin Goodman gave Stan Lee the editorial duties right. in terms of looking over certain stories. Right. But it was that time where Stan Lee made the historic choice to make Captain America slow, I mean, throw his shield and sling it around and it come back like a boomerang after it hits its targets. Right. Now, Martin Goodman had created Atlas Comics mm -hmm. as a direct result of trying to do away with Timely Comics because mm -hmm. times were changing. People were no longer starting to get into superhero comics, so it was starting to give rise to westerns, romance. Things of that nature. But then the beginning of the 1960s gave way to them being in competition with now DC Comics. Which they weren't DC at the time, but they were but they were DC Comics at the time, but they were under a different uh, publication. Right. But at the time, 
it was one of those things that Stan Lee was dissatisfied with the industry because that's all he was writing. He was writing comics. And, and he was saying, writing this romance. isn't me. He was westerns and things. He said, this is not me. He but his want wife to. suggested it. So his wife, Stan Lee's wife suggested that he would start creating stuff that he wants to write along the superhero genre. And that's the thing. Martin had told him, said, okay, DC has already created the Justice League and we need to compete with them in terms of mm -hmm. the superhero content and whatnot. Right. So Stan, go ahead and write stories that are relevant to you. Create characters that are relative, right. ve relevant to you. And we'll see what happens and go from there. Mm -hmm. Because at this point, the superhero genre had kind of died off. And Jack Kirby had already crea created challenges for the unknown for DC Comics. So Stan Lee had hooked up with Jack Kirby to create the first Marvel family in 1961. Known as the Fantastic Four. November of 1961, which is the Fantastic Four. Right. And history was made after that. And com Marvel Comics was solidified in becoming the powerhouse that it became today. And Stan Lee, as a result of Martin Goodman, having him be the editor for Timely Comics uh, at the end of its run of being Timely and then becoming Atlas Comics after he had finished serving his time in World War II. Mm -hmm. Then he served as a writer of sorts and Martin Goodman had sold Marvel Comics in 1968. He felt like it was time to get out of the publishing business. Right. And Stan Lee still stayed on board. And during that time, Stan Lee and Martin Goodman had hired Jack Kirby again, mm -hmm. Joe Simon, right. Steve Ditko, uh, Don Heck, right. Larry Lieber, Larry Lieber, Sal Buscema, John Romita Sr., among others. That and created the iconic characters of Spider-Man, the Hulk, Doctor Strange, uh, even more uh, Fantastic Four villains. X-Men. And you even had Roy Thomas come in there and help create, Archie Goodman helped create all of these characters right. during that time under Martin Goodman's and Stan Lee's tenure. Mm -hmm. Then when Stan, when Martin Goodman decided to get out of doing comics in 1968, he got right back in in 1974, creating the C brand Atlas publications. But unfortunately, every issue only made it to issue number four and it's subsequently uh, closed his doors within a year after starting everything. Right. And that one was started up by his son. He basically set up a publication for his son to run and it didn't quite turn out the way it right. did because nobody respected his son. So Martin Goodman had to come back in and take over for where his son left off and make sure that the comics were going on. But by that point, the damage was done. It was already too late. Mm -hmm. And the Atlas comic line completely folded through and through. Right. And then later on down the road, Martin Goodman himself decided to go ahead and start publishing magazines, which ended up becoming stuff like Swank and Gentleman's Magazines or whatnot that you see today when some of the porn on your, stuff. On your uh, adult stuff on the, on the regular newspaper. Exactly. Right. So, but it turns out that Martin Goodman had died in 1992 at his mm -hmm. home, and eventually his son succumbed at age 55, but it was Joe Goodman, his grandson, mm -hmm. who decided to reinvigorate the Atlas comic line mm -hmm. uh, around 2010 to try to get boost interest in all the characters that were created for that line back in the day. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, things didn't quite work out that way. Right. And things are, I don't know if those comics are still around, but they have been around, but they're not around anymore like they once were. Right. But this is basically a history lesson in terms of the grandfather of Marvel Comics who gave Stan Lee his big break at 16 and a half. Well, it was his relative. It was his, of his, course his, it was. his nephew. Yeah, yeah, it was Stan Lee was things. his nephew. Because yeah. Marvel Comics was a family-run business. Right. And it was something that was created as Timely Comics. Well, it was Marvel before it became Marvel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so It was Timely Comics and evolved into uh, Atlas Comics. Right. And then it evolved to, in 1961, Marvel Comics. Right. So... Martin Goodman, you can honestly say, was the one that gave Stan his break, but also gave a whole host of other writers and artists their big breaks. So that way, we have the medium and the history and the characters that we know and love today in the comics lore. My final uh, statement I want to say is basically, if Martin Goodman hadn't given Stan Lee his big break, we wouldn't have the Marvel, the Marvel Cinematic Universe as we have it. No, I think history now. would have turned out a little bit differently yeah. had Martin hadn't given his break because... Right. Martin, like I said, wanted to show this kid the ropes, and he's fresh out of high school, and the kid had a propensity to create certain, uh, uh, he was basically, he had a talent for writing. Right. And I'll just say this, because 
we didn't enter to talk about this with Stan Lee last time we did the podcast, or rather the webcast, was that Stan Lee had submitted a writing, uh, his writing samples to a local newspaper. But it turns out that he won three times. Finally, he dared them to, hey, pick another winner or right. whatnot. But they got back to him and told him, he says, I think you should take up writing seriously, professionally. And thus, that's why he ended up at Timely Comics eventually with Mark McGuigan, and, and history was made as a result. Right. Okay. And in any case, this is the, another edition of the Comic Anthologist. Once again, please hit the subscribe button mm -hmm. to show your support. Until then, as always, definitely take it easy, and until the next time, peace. Oh, and if you have any other questions, hit us up at thecomicanthologist at gmail.com. Thank you, and take it easy.